Major funding for Backyard Safari is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future. Look at this, an acorn. There's nothing else like it. Such a perfect shape, it even has its own little hat. It always amazes me that inside this tiny acorn, that inside this tiny acorn, it... That inside this tiny acorn is the seed for this, a huge oak tree. But it doesn't happen overnight. First, you plant the acorn in the soil. After a while, a tiny sprout breaks through and pushes up through the soil like this. And that tiny sprout grows and keeps growing until it turns into a seedling like this, which is two years old. Today, we are going to plant my little seedling outside in the ground. And one day, it will grow into a huge oak tree, like this. You want to know more? Well, what are you waiting for? Backyard Safari! Now's the perfect time. Come on in. The water's fine. Backyard Safari! Look too hard. It's right here in your own backyard. Backyard Safari. Backyard Safari. Backyard Safari. <laughs> trees, trees everywhere. Hi, Celia. Can't talk now. Gotta finish this hole before the truck comes. What truck? We are planting a tree today, right? Right! It's coming on a truck, right? Wrong. Huh? Here's the tree. Where? Here. Oh. Well, I did all this digging for that. I thought we were planting a real tree. This is a real tree. A real baby tree. And it's gonna grow up to be big and strong. Here's a poem I wrote about it. An acorn falls from a grown-up oak. Into the ground it tries to poke. If it finds the dirt below, from the seed a root will grow. The next step bud is all about a little thing called a sprout. If it breaks on up into the light, a tree is born out of sight. <laughs> 
From baby seedling to sapling child, time is passing all the while. Branches reach up for all it's worth. Roots reach down into the earth. As years go by, it grows and grows, and every season changes clothes. In winter, the oak wears snow pajama, then wakes with buds in spring orama. The leaves grow full to summer green. A crimson coat in autumn is seen. That's the scene, bud, where it's at. Mighty Oaks under Acorn's hat. So, bud, this baby tree will grow up to be a mighty oak. Well, I better start filling in this hole. We have a seedling to plant. Bud, take it easy. Nope, can't take it easy. Because after I finish here, I have to go make your seedling the perfect present. Oh, buddy, you don't have to give my seed. No, 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 no way we're going to have a planting party without presents. Huh. A present for my little seedling. <laughs> I like that, bud. Thank you. <laughs> See ya. See ya. All trees start out small and then grow into all sorts of sizes and shapes. But there's one thing trees have in common. They all have roots, bark, branches, and leaves. From root to fruit, a tour of an apple tree. The best place to start a tour of a tree is from the ground up. Every tree has roots. You can't see them because they reach deep below the ground and keep the tree from falling over. They also carry water and food from the ground up to the rest of the tree. This is the tree's trunk. The trunk connects the roots to the branches. The trunk and branches are covered with bark, which is like the tree's skin. The bark protects the tree. Near the bottom, most trees have bigger branches, like this one. Okay, let's see if we can just climb on, aha, uh -huh. yep. That's it. Okay, now we can get an even better look. You see, as we go higher, the branches get smaller and smaller. Let's take a look at what's on the end of the branches. Leaves. Every tree has leaves of one kind or another. And some trees have fruit as well as leaves. An apple tree has apples, and uh, I'm going to pick one. Okay, ah, that looks ripe. Okay, now I gotta reach it. Um, here I go, up here, yeah, yeah, no? Okay, over here, uh-huh, almost, a little high, yes, yes, got it! <laughs> Whoa, oh no! Oh, uh-oh, oh, I hope my camera's not broken. All right. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Can't forget about the apple. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. From root to fruit. <laughs> Come on, little oak. Let's say hi to Crinkaroot before we plant you into the ground. At Crinkaroot's topiary, everything grows out of the ground. She says, then we mix it all together. Hey, Crink, what's up? Well, if it isn't the guest of <laughs> honor. And how's little Oak Jr. today? Just great. What are you making? A cake for the planting party. Really? What kind? Ground cake, of course. Ground cake? Sure. Show her, Sass. One third soil, one third sand, and one third peat moss. Oh, not exactly mouth-watering. Mm, maybe not for us, but trees love to sink their roots into this stuff. This mixture will give your little tree a good start. Well, it's not every day a tree has a planting party. <laughs> but when this little tree gets bigger, lots of critters will be visiting all the time. <laughs> really? Sure. Trees go for the wildlife. <laughs> and wildlife goes for the trees. Well, what do you mean, Crank? <laughs> All kinds of creatures live in trees. 
At the bottom of some trees, among their roots and dried leaves, you'll find beetles living there. And worms, too. Higher up on tree trunks and branches, there are lots of animals. You may find squirrels scampering across branches, or birds gathering in flocks, or monkeys climbing through the treetops. Even snakes hang out in trees? In some trees, lizards too. And there's usually a tasty meal to be found there. Whoa! Look at him go for that insect! <laughs> Looks like that woodpecker is finding insects to eat inside the tree. Yes, siree. The tree is full of places to find lunch. And sometimes the tree itself is a good snack for a hungry animal. Like this giraffe. <laughs> He's really munching away on the leaves and bark. Ah, but leaves and bark aren't just for eating. Animals like this squirrel use strips of bark to make their nests with. And they often build them right up in the branches. Wow, that's a really big nest. And sometimes home is inside the tree trunk like for this family of macaws. Boy, all sorts of animals are alive and well in trees. Yep, a tree is a very busy place, all right. Sometimes, though, a tree needs to be taken care of. And there are people who know just how to do it. Do you want to know more? I always want to know more. Uh, then just step out there. See you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> A city park. There are plenty of trees here, and they all look pretty healthy. I wonder why they need taken care of. Hi, Tom. Hi, Celia. How are you doing? I'm good. This is Tom Ching. He's a horticulturist. That's someone who takes care of trees and other plants. Tom, I thought trees grew just fine on their own. Why do these need taken care of? Oh, good question, Celia. Trees are living things. They basically need water and fresh air, and they need good soil. Oftentimes in the city, we don't have a lot of that, and the trees become weak. So how does a tree get sick? Well, Celia, if you think of the bark as the skin of the tree, it protects the tree. If the bark is broken, a wound is created, and something like a fungus, like the one that's over there, can come in and infect the tree, causing it to become unhealthy. A, a fungus is kind of like a tiny plant, right? No, oh, a tiny plant that feeds off of the food that the tree produces and needs for itself. How does the bark of a tree get broken? Uh, if you mistreat the branch, if someone climbs the tree, a woodpecker can make a hole in the tree. A football can scrape the uh, bark off of the branch. How can you tell that this branch is, is sick? If you take a look at this branch, there are no leaves on the branch. The bark is actually cracking and peeling off. If you take a look at the branch that's over here, Take a look at the leaves. They're uh -huh. nice, dark, green, lush. Right, that's a healthy branch. Yes. It's beautiful. Well, what are we going to do about this problem? Do you want to prune this branch? You mean cut the sick branch off? Yes, let's take it off. Yeah, let's do it. OK, Celia, keep the blades straight and keep the motion constant. Wow, this is kind of hard. We're almost there. <laughs> wow! Looks like it's going to fall. Right? Yep, it's cracking. It's coming down. OK. OK, that's enough here. And let's cut off some from the top. OK. And let's get the other side of it okay. to come down as well. OK. And ah! it's going to fall. Wow! <laughs> it sure did. I can't believe we just did that. So you mean that cutting off this branch, it keeps the fungus from spreading to the rest of the tree, right? Right. We don't want the fungus to go anywhere else. 
You only get rid of the sick branches? No, sometimes we take off old branches like this one here. Well, isn't an old branch going to just fall off by itself? If it does it naturally, what'll happen is because it's old and it's very heavy, as it's coming down the tree, sometimes it'll rip off the bark on the trunk of the tree, and that's not something we want. No, no, it's not. We're gonna have to climb this tree now because that branch up there is too high to reach from the ground. Celia, we're going to use that branch to make the rest of the tree healthier. Tom and I are putting the branch into a wood chipper, which breaks the branch into little pieces. We're using the wood chips we made and putting it down as a mulch. Uh, well, what's that? Well, the mulch with so many people in the city walking through the park, we don't want the soil to become packed down. Oh, you want to make sure that the tree's roots get uh, the food and all the water, everything it needs, right? Exactly. So, how do these wood chips work? Well, as the wood chips break down, they improve the soil by turning the soil softer and more spongy, so it can hold in water and nutrients for the tree. Oh. Cool, huh? So we're making this tree a little bit healthier. Oh, I'm sure we are, Celia. Tom, thanks. I, I learned a lot about trees and how to make sure they're healthy. Well, thank you, Celia, for coming to our park. No, all right. I'll give you a taste. A little ground cake every day keeps a tree growing in every way. Oh. Don't tell me you want some, too. Oh, I forgot. Time for the workshop. I've got some important people to talk to. Bye-bye! <laughs> Let's see what my friends Josh and Gabriel are doing. Hi, boys. Hi, Quinkle. Whoa! <laughs> so tell me, what are you doing? We just playing play a tree game. Oh, how do you play? We put on this. It's called the yeah. blindfold. Oh. Let's see how you put it on. Okay, Quinkle. Uh-huh. I see. Oh, yeah. What's Josh going to do after you put it on him? He's going to try to feel around the tree. Try to feel. Describe the tree to me and, and you, Quinkle. Oh. He'll try to describe what the tree feels like without seeing it. <laughs> Neat. What's next? You spin him around three times. Like this. One, two, three. So he won't know which direction he's facing. Uh, then what? You hold his hands and take him to a tree. Oh, if she can't see. <laughs> this ought to be fun. Joshua, describe the tree to Crinkle Root. And me. Crinkle Root? And Gabriel, it has a lot of grooves in it, a lot of hard bark, and the tree is bigger than me and wider. I can't put my hands around it. <laughs> wow. That's a doggone good description, if you ask me. So now, what do you do next? Spin around three times again, OK, Crinkle Root? One, two, three. And then you take off the blindfold. Yeah, just, just lift it, it up. Yeah, but just pull it off there. Pull it up. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Like that. Okay. <laughs> now where are you taking him? I'm gonna take him to a tree. Okay, Josh, what is this one? I get it. Josh is gonna try to figure out which tree he was feeling. 
Is that the tree, Josh? Well, actually it can't be, Crinkle Root, because I, I, it's not that wide. Okay. And wow. it doesn't have a lot of grooves. What else? Smooth on the bark. Uh, doesn't sound like the right tree. Want to try another one? How about this one, Josh? Is that the tree, Josh? Yes, it is, because it has a lot of grooves. It's taller, and I can't climb on it. I don't, I can't, it's much wider, it's bigger than me. <laughs> right you are, Josh. Tell me, why do you like to play the tree game? Because you get to put on the blindfold and you get to smell and do all the tree things. I like huh. playing this because it's fun and uh -huh. scientific and stuff. I really like it. <laughs> it's amazing what you can learn about trees just from playing a game. Well, I better get going. Bye, Quinkle. Bye. Bye. Trees come in all shapes and sizes. Some trees grow so tall they seem to touch the sky. Some grow thick and old. Some trees have bare trunks with neat round tops. Trees can have branches that stick out stiff and straight. Or have branches that pour like water to the ground. Others are covered with shaggy moss from top to bottom. Some trees have golden leaves that shimmer in the wind. Sometimes, trees stand alone. And others grow together in vast forests of green. But wherever they are, they're a joy to be seen. <sighs> Listen to the breeze Growing in the trees Dance and shake. I love the sound they make. Somewhere up above, I hear the chirping of newborn birds as Mama built the nest in a hollow of a tree. Take a good look at a tree. There is so much to see. Leaves and twigs and squirrels and big eyed eyes. May your roots dig deep and your branches reach high. Hi, Crank. Hi, Celia. Am I too late? No, not at all. The festivities well, are just about to begin. Happy planting day, little seedling. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry I forgot to wrap it. I, I, oh, I didn't have time. What is it? Well, you've heard of a yardstick? Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a tree stick, so we can measure how much it grows every year. Oh, great idea, bud. Uh, let's get a picture of the happy occasion. Why not? <coughs> get ready with the camera, Sass. All right, everyone. Say tree. Trees. <laughs> Trees have many different parts. You can use the parts from real trees to make a picture or collage of a tree. Now here's my friend Jeremy to show you how. 
I used all things um, from real trees. See, um, there's the bark that I put on to make the trunk of the tree. And um, the, there are the roots down here. It's kind of like the foot of the tree. Actually, they're real roots of a th some kind of vegetable. Here's some branches here that I used to actually make the real tree branches. And um, here's some seeds around that sort of like fell to the ground from the top of the tree up here. Well, here's some eggs around here in a bird's nest. And um, here's another branch with, le with leaves on it that I used to make um, the top of the tree. To make your own tree collage, you'll need construction paper, glue, and pieces from all different parts of a tree. And remember, the best place to learn about nature is right outside your door. Because when you're outside, you're on your own backyard safari. Bye-bye! Safari is a production of Lancet Media Entertainment and is produced in association with the American Museum of Natural History. This episode of Backyard Safari is made possible by a major grant from the National Science Foundation, America's Investment in the Future.